Hey, what's up guys? This morning I am headed to fix a uh, implement. It's a dirt mover, I think is what it is. But anyway, uh, the guy that I do a bunch of work for, done a bunch of work for last year, pulled the tongue off of a piece of equipment that he was uh, dragging across the field yesterday. So I am going to fix that this morning. So let's head on over there. I just had to load my secret box. This white box is, box is full of uh, secret things, but we gotta have it to, to fix things, so now let's head on over. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a pipeline welder for about seven or eight years now. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for rig welders, pipeliners, and the pipeline lifestyle. So if those are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. All right, so on my way out here, I wanted to um, kind of answer some questions about uh, the video before last that I put up, which was a pipeline welder side hustle, which was me welding on some H braces. And I uh, had quite a few questions. One of the questions I got a couple of times was what rod did I use on those H braces? I used 532 5P plus, which is bead rod, 532 6010. But on fence, literally you can use, I mean, anything, it doesn't matter. Uh, but that's I know a lot of guys use that 532 on fence kind of help fill the gaps and whatnot But I mean I've used eighth inch back in the back in the day. I've used 3 16 but 532 is 532 anything um, 6010 8010 I like 8010 just because that's what I'm used to from welding on the pipeline and it welds a lot smoother and, But but I mean that's I don't even have any uh, 8010 left on my truck, so I've just been using uh, bead rod, but so that's what I use to weld it out couple people asked did I use a template on those saddles yes I use a template any of your welding supply stores are gonna have nowadays they're they're usually red but like the one I was using was yellow it's an older one but like uh that was two and seven eighths pipe I was welding on they got two and seven eighths two and three eighths I mean they got uh, an inch and a half I mean they got I think anywhere from inch and a half on up to a six or eight inch saddle I mean but you can lay all that out from your blue book, but two inch, two and three inch, four inch, stuff like that for fence. Most generally people that build fence use those saddles, those templates, uh, they're, they're metal and uh, they're just a lot easier to deal with instead of trying to lay something out and it's a lot faster. Some guys that have lots of experience from people that I've talked to around the house and just older guys, I've heard stories of older guys not using a template at all just because I've done it so many times and they don't even have to use a template even whenever they're cutting cutting off to put caps on so that's pretty neat <clears throat> which leads me to my next question somebody asked if uh, I was gonna put caps on those H braces normally I would but the uh, client the guy I was working for that I was doing that work for he did not care you know what I mean he didn't it didn't matter to him he's not worried about it at least not right now. He just wanted his H braces up so they could get wire strung. It all depends on who you're working for, what they want, you know. If he would have only wanted one bar, I would have put one bar. If he would have wanted flat in between there, I would have put flat instead of pipe. Like it just, whatever they want. I mean, you can obviously, depending on how much work you've done for them and how much they know versus how much experience you have, you know, you can always suggest some certain things, but like something like that is just real simple, basic farm farm work is what I like to call it you know it's just there's nothing to it and he just he didn't want caps so it's not that he didn't want it but he just wasn't worried about it at the time so who knows I might go back later and put caps on that's all I can think of right now if I think of more throughout this video I'll try to answer some more questions got to stop and load some 5 16 plate they have laying out here in case whatever's in the secret white box doesn't work. Now, 
got to drive around hunting for this implement that's out here. He told me where it was at. Um, I think I'm headed in the right direction. A Easter egg hunt month early. Hunting for one big Easter egg. Y'all don't see it, do you? Do you just holler at me, okay? Y'all just holler at me. I mean, it can't be hard to miss, right? Dirt mover to work this kind of land right here. This amount, this amount of land can't be can't be uh, hard to miss. I don't, I don't think anyway. This is like looking for a John boat in the ocean. I think there's something back here. That's where I'm headed first. That's what it's looking like. Oh, I'm getting closer. There might just be some yellow cows. Oh, maybe not. It might be a yellow implement. He didn't even tell me a color. I don't know what color it is. Feeling pretty good about it. Closer I get, I keep changing my mind back and forth. Yeah, that's it. No, that's not it. Yeah, that's it. No, that's not it. I think that's it. I think we're on the right track. Oh, yeah. That's it. What in the yellow cow? It was definitely our implement. Good deal. Good deal. A little old dirt mover. Come on. Mm. Get out and assess the situation. Thought he said he pulled the tongue off of it. Maybe I'm at the wrong implement. Don't look like there's anything pulled off of this. Hmm. Well, shoot. Oh, you know what? Look what I just found. Would y'all look at what I found over here? We got another implement. What do y'all want to bet? That's the one that needs a fixing. Hmm. Better go over there and check it out. I was like, man, there's just nothing, nothing wrong with this that I can see. I mean, now that looks more like a welding project there. Come on. All right, now let's assess the situation. Pink. Pink actually it goes pink. All right. Let's see what we can't do here. What's in the white box? Let's reveal what's in the white box. Ta -da! Just plate and whatnot.
All right, folks. That's a job well done. Well, we'll find out. I always tell them it'll hold till it breaks. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Got that all did. Got that plate unloaded. The plate that I grabbed before. Magic uh, white box, or the secret white box didn't didn't have what I needed. Thought I had more plate than that in there. But yeah, that white box, I keep like a, you know, extra plate, um, uh, pipe caps, you know, a few of each size usually, some chains, like for latches on gates and stuff, uh, little hinges, um, just random stuff like that uh, for whenever I, you know, doing a little job and like a little repair job or something. Take this thing out of four wheel drive. Just good to have on hand. But uh, yeah, yeah, got it all done. What other questions? I need to look on the YouTubes and see what other questions you guys might've had. But, but yeah, that's uh, some more of what I do um, to stay afloat, you know. Is a fix implements that was a uh, dirt mover, little dirt mover. Um, old, obviously, back when we built stuff good, but tongue's been welded on a couple of times, but it it uh, broke again, so we fixed her up. But yeah, implements, fence that's my air freshener that keeps waving at y'all. I got coffee beans in there. Come on, mm, love it. Can I go open this gate? I'll be right back. Get right back. In. One second, I'm have to close the gate. We got some cattle in here. Don't want them suckers sneaking out of here. Sneaking out of here. <laughs> All right. We're back. Oh, I answered this guy back, but. One guy said, didn't really have anything to do with the video, but he asked if we had to register our truck as a commercial vehicle um, because you're using it to make a profit. And what I answered was, I think it depends on uh, what state your truck's registered in. And if I remember right, mine's not registered as commercial. Um, but I think you used to have to. You used to, like they wanted us to have DOT numbers and everything. But I think, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, um, that the 798 had had something to do with why we don't have to anymore. Because of, you know, what we do. And maybe that's just 798 welders or whatever. Like maybe only pipeline welders. I, d I don't know. But, I don't think we have to register them as commercial, but I could be wrong on that. So that's what I answer those. It depends on the state you're from. And we used to have to in Oklahoma, but we don't anymore. But I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Somebody said, can you show the actual welds you're doing? Would like to see how they came out. I can't now because I'm not on that job no more. But uh, I will get footage of the next ones that I do. <laughs> Somebody said all those bumps. And you didn't spill a drop. Coffee. It's funny. Uh, got any tips on how to fish mouth? And what he means is like the saddle. Like any tips on how to saddle the pipe to fit in between? Um, not. I'm trying to think. Not anything in particular. Just doing it a couple times. And uh, like turning your torch up is a tip that I can think of right off the bat. Like up pretty high, especially on this old pipe. Like just turn everything up a little bit more that way it blows anything out of there still make sure you have a clean tip I always like a clean tip but and just doing it more you know and depending on what you're fitting it to you know if this job that video that i'm answering questions off of it was just two and seven eighths two and seven eighths so it was real simple but a lot of times you'll be going in between uh four inch posts so you'll have two and seven eighths going to a lot of that gum spilled the drop now boys boys and gills so you just have to practice with uh 
whatever you're doing. Just, just practice is the main piece of advice. There's not much to it. Just practice, practice, practice. This guy said, can you run a tub with an SA200 running sideways in the bed and still be able to pull a fifth wheel camper? Use neck adapter the truck is a long bed. You should be able to. Um, I've known guys, yeah, I think it's gotta be a long bed, but you can pull a camper with a tub. For those of you who don't know who, what tub means, that means in the back of a regular bed. You can put your machine in just like mine is, running this way, sideways. It's the, what I call the normal way, but I don't know, maybe some people might not consider that normal. But anyway, yes, you should be able to do that. Uh, I have seen it done. This guy said, do you, do you think you'll ever go back to the pipeline? Loved the updates on the right away. Yes, I definitely plan on going back on a pipeline as soon as I have the opportunity. I've been trying, boys. I've been trying. Boys and girls. Uh, this guy said, how do you keep your saddles lined up on plane? Eyeball. Use your eyeball. If it was like, you know, an actual fabrication deal where, where everything had to be particular, like on pipeline, if we're building like a manifold or something, then we would use the center finder and find the plane, but on pipe fence, you just mark it and you roll it. You just, eye, you literally eyeball it, look down there and, and then go to the other end and eyeball your template and uh, just mark it, just dry eyeball. What is some good ways to practice pipeline, practice welding for the pipeline? Any type of welding is what I would suggest, but stick welding helps because we, I would say, uh, generally speaking, uh, 90% of pipeline welding is welded with stick. That's not like a statistic, that's just Austin Ross statistic, but any kind of welding whatsoever. But fence is a good good thing, fence or implant, any, any kind of welding. Any kind of uh, with downhill rod on fence, on, on anything though. I mean shop work, any kind of welding. I worked in a shop for three years right after high school around a MIG gun and that helped me tremendously just because I learned I studied a, a welding puddle. Uh, Tyler Sassy, the guy that has uh, that started Western Welding Academy, he, what I heard him say whenever I went up there and visited that school, is he all, he said a puddle is a puddle is a puddle, as in it's all a puddle, and you got to learn to study that puddle. So any type of welding is good for to get you to pipeline welding. Like any kind of experience is good. I can't stress that enough. Do you wear cutting glasses? Negative wear these Tom Waters or just sunglasses. This guy asked if I had a high number on the wheel, as in the out of work list, 798 out of work list. He said, man, you've been out a long time, as in like off a long time. Last I checked, I was 740 something. Uh, it's actually moved to the past few weeks, which is good, real good news, but still, still pretty high. They're calling like four and 500s and lower, so still a couple hundred out. But that's why you can't depend on that out of work list. Speaking of 798 out of work list, I try not to depend on that out of work list. Um, it's a great thing for guys like me that are just getting in. In previous videos, I've talked about how I've dispatched every one of my jobs. Like that's that's what I've utilized is that out of work wheel, or the out of work list. So it's definitely it's definitely a good thing. But I don't advise depending on the out of work list. Um, try to you know hustle and get to know people and try to make a name for yourself and go to work via the weld boss, not just um, waiting on your number to be called. So This guy said, glad to see someone else talking to their self while fabricating. Awesome work. <laughs> yeah, I talk to myself a lot. I make noises when I work by myself. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Kayla thinks I'm crazy. I don't know. Does the union allow moonlighting on your own? But now, I think he meant, but not allow you to go work for another company. To clear that up, because I've had a lot of comments on uh, like me doing my own like fence work and stuff and being in the union, you just, the, the main deal with being in the 798 is you're not supposed to go weld on non-union main lines. That's the most general way I know how to answer that. You can definitely weld on fence, weld on drilling rigs, uh, do your own thing. Yeah, I mean, you can even weld on some distribution stuff, like, but that's getting in the, what I call the gray area. Uh, you just, that's something to talk with the business manager about. You know, if you do join 
whatever union you join, whether that's 798 or any other local, call the business agent and ask them, you know, be honest with them, ask them like, what can I do, you know, I need to work, you know, um, but yeah, to clear that up, being a 798 welder, you can weld on any, anything, you can run your truck on anything, just not, you can't go work for a non-union mainline contractor, pipeline contractor, that's the, that's the main thing you can't do. Another guy said, how did you not spill your coffee? I still spill my coffee, trust me. This guy said, I was just wondering what you drive when you're not driving your rig. Uh, my wife's truck, which is a three quarter ton Ram. My wife's truck, or my 95, which I don't have a bed on right now, but I drive my welding truck a lot. How long have you been laid off? Almost a year. Do you supply the steel for these fencing projects and what is the pipe exactly two inch schedule 40 question mark? This job I did not supply the steel. Some bigger jobs you will depending on the client. A lot of the farmers and stuff that I work for have old oil fill pipe laying around from a well or something on their place or, or stuff they've got at an auction. So on most people I work for have their own stuff but it's common. It's just as common to be a mobile rig welder and do fence for other people that don't have access to metal or don't want to go get it to supply it myself like go to the welding supply and get it myself and I was using two and seven eighths I don't uh, so that wouldn't be two inch schedule 40 it would be I'm not sure what that would be somebody let me know two and seven eighths structural pipe I don't know if, I don't even know if we would call it a schedule anything I don't know it's just oil fill pipe is what we call it around here all right that's going to wrap it up for this video i hope you guys enjoyed coming along with me uh and getting some questions answered i was going to go to the hall today but i got that phone call last night so i ended up doing this instead and uh yeah now i'm gonna go it's almost lunchtime go eat some lunch and uh, go to the hall tomorrow and practice that uphill beat some more is what i'm gonna do so Thank you all for watching. We will see you next Friday. My advice for this week is do whatever you are most passionate about. If you're most passionate about being a rig welder, which means running a welding truck, or if you're most passionate about pipeline welding, or if you're most passionate about inspecting on the pipeline, or if you're most passionate about doing a totally different trade. I, I, I do not advise becoming a pipeline welder just for the money. It is a great living and I understand if, if you're doing it to try to make good money and then to invest it. And if that's the case, then I, I guess, you know, that's an option. I just know that like this lifestyle is real hard on families and it's real unsteady and everything so what's going to get you through the hard times is the passion you know behind it and it just gets easier with time so but like I totally understand wanting to do it to make good money and then to invest that money into a business or something else so you don't have to work anymore or whatever ideally you know what I mean so but anyway do whatever it is you're passionate about whatever it is do whatever it is you're passionate about. Don't do something just solely for the money. That's my advice. Thank you for watching this video. And remember, learn something every day. We'll see y'all next week.